good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today, it's time to look at another new card, which is going to be coming out in Lost Thunder. And as I am a man who owns many tarantulas, it's time to have a look at Ariados, a Pokemon that I like very much indeed. Now, we actually have an Ariados, which came out very recently in Celestial Storm. An Ariados about which many people got fairly excited, and I don't think that is a bad reaction at all. One that I like a lot, it does really depend on your opponent having a bunch of special conditions on them, which is not the easiest way to actually use a particular card, but you never know. Could work out quite nicely for one colourless energy, 20 damage plus 50 more for each special condition. And you can combine that with stuff like Naya Lego GX or Salazizzle or things of that nature to work out quite nicely. But anyway, we have a new Ariados. And what's kind of fun is we're going to actually now have Ariados two sets in a row which I'm willing to bet most people weren't expecting. Also, shout out, it's it's only an expanded now, but I love the old Ariados with automatic poison. That, to me, is kind of fun. But this is not about the old Ariados, ladies and gentlemen. Although maybe you can combine it with the one we've just had. It is about the new Ariados. So what does a new Ariados do? Well, obviously, it's been revealed at the official Japanese Pokemon website and has been translated by the lovely David Hockman, who, as we all know by now, is a lovely, lovely man. So it's a stage one with 110 HP, which I'm going to be honest... It's lower than we would like. There's a bunch of basics like Registeel that are up at 130, which is quite a bit better. We want our stage ones to be better than this, but then again, Alolan Ninetales isn't any higher than this, so it's not exactly like this is some pitiful HP we shouldn't have been expecting. And if we compare this to the other Ariados, it's actually gigantic because the two best Ariados we've ever had, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. And Mysterious Treasures, both of which came in at a whopping 80. So actually, in that respect, it's quite good. Weakness to Fire is fine because you should be one-hit KO'd by most things. Moltres won't one-hit KO you. That's nice. But something like a Ho-Oh will just run through you. The one thing I do like is that Ho-Oh's little attack does 50 damage. Which with weakness will do 100 damage. And you will actually be able to take a hit from that. So in that respect it's actually quite nice. Retreat cost to 1 is good because Escape Board will give you free retreat post rotation. Yay! And I know I mentioned that in most videos. But post rotation I expect us to see a lot of play. There is a huge difference between a retreat cost of 1 and a retreat cost of 2 post rotation so it does need to be pointed out and being a grass pokemon means you can hit weakness against stuff like lichen rock which is seeing an awful lot of play at the moment well for a double colorless energy it does 30 damage and if your opponent plays any item or supporter cards from their hand prevent all effects of that card done to the defending pokemon now, if we take a quick look at the damage, it's not terribly impressive. 30 damage is low. With a choice band, 60. With weakness, 120. Great. You're, you're like two hit carrying a Lycan Rock. No, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a fan. Of course, you are using a double colorless energy here, so we do need to mention that you are vulnerable to Enhanced Hammer, and you are vulnerable to Kartana, getting rid of that energy, and do remember that Special Charge has rotated out of the format, so we don't really have any way to recover the Special Energy at the moment, which is a little bit of a pain. But this is actually a super awkward card in terms of ruling. Now, the reason it's taken me so long to get round to Ariados here is because I've had quite a long conversation with the lovely David Hockman about exactly what this attack does. Now, in terms of the wording here, it's quite unique compared to other cards. Here's what we think it does. And by we, I'm really giving the credit to David here because David really is the one who knows way more about it than I do, given that he speaks Japanese and I don't. Now, some of these are easy. If your opponent goes to play a potion, well, that is an effect on the defending Pokemon, i.e. the opponent that got hit with this attack. So potion won't work. Similarly, if you try to play a switch, that won't work. If you try and play an ace roller, 
to pick up that Pokemon, it won't work. Some of these are easy. If it's an item or a supporter card that directly affects a Pokemon of your opponent that got hit by this attack, it doesn't work. The examples I've just given you, Potion, Ace Roller, etc. However, you do run into difficulties with something like a Guzma. Because Guzma doesn't really affect the defending Pokemon. It kind of affects the Pokemon of your opponent that you're trying to get with Guzma. But then does make the Pokemon that was hit with Ariados switch here. Now, there is an old ruling about Groudon. And it was often talked about with Escape Rope. And the deal with Groudon was, if you played an Escape Rope, while a Primal Groudon was in the active, it failed because you can't play an item card to move Primal Groudon. Because it had the Omega Barrier Ancient Trait, which stopped supporter and item cards. Okay. But if you played an Escape Rope on the active Pokemon, and there was only a Primal Groudon on the bench, that would work, because the effect is on the active Pokemon, and Primal Groudon just has to be gusted up, and that's fine. But this isn't quite the same, because Guzma specifically says, switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with the active Pokemon, if you do switch your active Pokemon, and then, of course, the wording on the second half of Guzma is exactly the same as switch, like exactly the same as Switch, and we know that Switch will fail. Now, I believe, and I am not 100% on this ruling, we will need a ruling on this, I believe what happens is that the Guzma does work, and then the switching fails. So you will be able to pull up a bench Pokemon, but you won't be able to switch with it, because Guzma doesn't say that you can't do the second part. We know that you cannot switch if you cannot gust. So if you try gusting a Primal Groudon, it won't work and you won't be able to switch, but that's because you gust and then switch. No gusting, no switching. However, here the gusting works, then you go to switch and it won't work. I am not 100% sure on this ruling. I believe that's how it works. We will have to get an official ruling. But either way, you're still stopping a whole bunch of stuff, so it's still a useful attack. As for the second attack, Grass Double Colorless, 70 damage plus poison. With a Choice Badge, you're getting a one-hit KO on a Lycan Rock. You're getting a one-hit KO on a Lapras. That's really nice. I just worry that the energy to damage ratio here is a little bit skew with, as you might say in the UK. It's fine, but if you're not hitting for weakness, it's just not doing enough. Yeah, sure, you can use the Viper to increase the damage from poison here, but... You're still two energy attachments, one of which is a double colorless energy, just to do a bit of damage with poison. I mean, yeah, not loving it. What I am loving, however, is the Spinarak. I know, right? We don't usually go and look at the pre-evolutions in these videos, but Spinarak needs to be mentioned here. Spinarak's actually really good. Now, it's not the 50 HP. That's not really good. That will go down to a Moltres. And it's not the attack that does 10 for a colorless energy. That's not really good. No, ladies and gentlemen. What's really good about this is the fact that for one grass energy, automatic paralysis, automatic poison, and then you put Spinarak and all cards attached to it into the Lost Zone. And why does that sound good? Well, because of Jump Bluff. Now, I showed you Jump Bluff the other day. And in fact, I actually did a video with Jump Bluff with a couple of other cards because you can't really separate it. But Jump Bluff does 20 damage for each Pokemon you've got in the discard pile. And then you've got Skiploom, which when you evolve into the stage one, you get to swap it for a Jump Bluff in your deck. That's pretty good. While putting Skip Bloom and all cards attached to it into the Lost Zone, i.e. every Jump Bluff essentially gives you two Pokemon in the Lost Zone. So Jump Bluff should, once you've got them all out, your prize, etc., have eight Pokemon in the Lost Zone and be doing 160 for one energy. That's really good. And then Natu's got the same attack, except for it's for a double colorless energy. But we need more ways to get Pokemon into the Lost Zone, and I actually think that Spinarak could be a good option here. You put Spinarak in the Lost Zone while getting Poison and Paralysis. So you force your opponent to have something like a Guzma or an Ace Roller just to be able to attack. 
Now, interestingly enough, they could evolve out of it because you'll be doing this early game. But actually, don't forget that Sea of Nothingness is a card which keeps special conditions on them even when they evolve, but then don't forget a skateboard is a card, so they might be able to retreat out of the paralysis anyway. But it's something to bear in mind. Spinarak could be a great, great opening Pokemon in a Jump Bluff deck, even if you don't play Ariados, which is kind of cool. I like Ariados as a Pokemon because he's a spider, and I like the first attack because it's interesting, but I feel it's just a little bit too weak. But I actually think Spinarak could be the star of the show here. I do believe that there is a deck here for Jumpluff. And I think Spinarak could be the starting Pokemon you're looking for. Automatic paralysis while doing a bit of poison damage. While getting a Pokemon in the lost zone. That sounds alright to me. But you know what ladies and gentlemen. It's over to you guys now. I would like to hear from you lovely ladies and gentlemen what you think of Ariados, what you think of Spinarak, what you think about Jump Bluff, what you think about Cake. Tell me what you think ladies and gentlemen in the comment section. Go nuts, but do remember the rule. Be nice. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all of that head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that and do make sure that you're checking out my other channel wassy plays for some more wassy action but by far the most important thing as always is to look after yourselves until next time thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio